Welcome to the Longmont Pastor video blog. It's great to have you with us this week. And I'm here with Pastor Nick, who is the author of the Longmont Pastor blog. And uh, you can find it at dkd.org. And uh, could you just tell us briefly uh, kind of what the purpose is of the blog and, and uh, why you're writing it? Yeah, I started the blog because I felt like there were some topics which were major cultural topics and issues, and just I didn't see them being addressed or at least addressed well uh, online. And I know that there's so many people, anytime they want to know about anything, they Google it. And so I'm like, well, we need to start populating the internet with some answers to people's questions and to, to address, you know, bring the gospel into culture and into the th discussions that people are having. Yeah, one of those uh, blog posts, actually you posted it last year, but this year uh, you posted it again and got picked up on Twitter and it's kind of got a lot of traction. And, uh, you know, this time of year and your blog post is called Does uh, Easter Come From Ishtar? And it's, uh, you know, it's you know, one of those things that's been traveling, as you said, around the internet. And it's probably good that we actually get the truth out there. Right, it's a lot of misnomers. Yeah. Yes. And, but, you know, one of the very important questions during this time of year is where do Easter eggs and the Easter bunny come from? And yeah. so we want to answer that question. Yeah, so a lot of people think that Easter eggs and the Easter bunny are pagan. And in fact, there are some people who, you know, even there's this meme out there that says, you know, that the eggs and a bunny were the symbols of the goddess Ishtar, who's this um, Babylonian and Assyrian uh, goddess of, of sex and procreation, which is true. I mean, that was, uh, Ishtar was the Babylonian goddess of, of sex and fertility. Uh, however, her symbols were the lion and the eight-pointed star. They were not uh, eggs and bunnies. And here's the thing that a lot of people just assume but it's not actually true. They assume that Easter eggs and the Easter bunny are pagan in origin and that, and you know, they really upset sometimes Christians. And, and I guess if you don't know better, then of course you'd be upset. You'd say, you know, here's our most important day as Christians where we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, this earth changing, you know, um, history shaping event. And people are trying to hijack it and make it about something else. And of course you would be upset by that. But let's actually look at what history says. Easter eggs and the Easter bunny are not pagan in origin. In fact, well, let's start with Easter eggs. They're Christian in origin, which is really interesting. Here's, here's why. Because uh, during Lent, which is the 40-day fast before Easter, um, Christians in the Middle Ages uh, in the West and in the East, but, and to this day, still, Eastern Orthodox Christians do this practice. They don't eat eggs during Lent. Um, now, now there's still practices during Lent, right? So, like, for example, Roman Catholics don't like to eat meat. They'll eat fish, which I kind of think is a meat, but whatever. I'm not going to argue with them. Um, you know, they won't eat it on Friday. So, um, for Lent in the Middle Ages... Uh, both Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox Christians would not eat eggs for the whole Lenten uh, fast. That's still the case with Eastern Orthodox Christians today. But so what happened during that time is that in preparation for the end of Lent, what the people would do is they'd start to hard boil eggs a few days before Easter. And that was so that on Easter, they would celebrate, you know, they'd go to church, they'd celebrate, and then they'd come home and they would eat these hard boiled eggs uh, as a celebration uh, that the fast was over. And so what they started doing over time, they were, they were preparing these hard boiled eggs. And then what they start doing? Well, they started playing games with them. That's as simple as it is. They started dyeing them with the kids just for fun. Uh, you know, I always think about people in the Middle Ages, they had so much more time on their hands because they didn't have smartphones and TV. So they had to find some way to entertain themselves. So they dyed these eggs and then they would hide them for the kids to find on Easter morning. And you find the eggs and then you get to eat them because now the Lenten fast is over. And that's all it is. It was just a, it was actually a Christian thing. And, um, and that's... Even, you know, that's the origin of Easter eggs. The Easter bunny was actually only invented in the 17 and 1800s. Uh, and it was invented, check this out, by German um, immigrants to the United States. German immigrants to North America. And they invented the Easter bunny uh, not out of any pagan worship, not out of any fertility rites. It was literally just to have fun with their kids on Easter. It was 
it's basically as pagan as Mickey Mouse, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have somebody dress up as the Easter Bunny, or you draw a picture of the Easter Bunny, and the Easter Bunny would come out, and all the kids would be happy. So if you think the Easter Bunny is, you know, pagan and evil, well, then you should probably take issue with any mascot dressed up at any amusement park, because it's basically the same thing. It was just invented to have fun with kids. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, of course, and these kind of controversies always seem to, to take us away from the true purpose of Easter, and that's, sure. that's Jesus coming. And, you know, and any way that our enemy, Satan, can get us to argue about things that really are peripheral uh, to the true meaning and the true, true um, purpose of what Easter is all about is, is, you know, if he can do that, he will, you know. And that's one of those things. Easter eggs and Easter bunnies is always a fight yeah. every every year. Yeah, and so churches will have these controversies, you know. Some churches will do Easter egg hunts um, as outreaches, and other people will get really upset about that, saying, how could you do something pagan that detracts from Jesus? Those people, on the other hand, will say, well, either they'll argue that it's not pagan or else they'll maybe they don't even know the history and they'll just say, hey, we're just trying to connect with the culture. This is where people are at. And we want to, through this, in, introduce the gospel. I guess my contribution to that discussion would be to say Easter eggs are not pagan. Neither is the Easter bunny. Um, these things aren't at odds with Christianity. Yet yeah, they may detract and we can have that conversation or they can be a cultural bridge. That's a different conversation, but let's at least take the paganism thing off the table because that's just not even accurate. Totally, totally. That's completely, completely true. Well, I would encourage you to get over to nickkady.org and catch up with this blog. Does, you know, Easter come from Ishtar? It's a really good read. And just, uh, you know, get your mind around some of the stuff that's floating all out there on the Internet. And there's a bunch of other new posts that have, uh, are up there for you for you to read. And share those with your friends. Get it out there on the Internet. Spread this out there so people will get the truth about these particular topics. And uh, subscribe to his blog, of course. And uh, we hope to see you next time. God bless. God bless.